Go play some house music. So I started to follow him down there to the house music downtown Lower Manhattan. That's when I caught on to what the house music was. I was in the I was in the club till the, the Latin quarters were in maybe like one two. I'd be in the club till the sun come up, dancing with the dance to house music. So then one day after school, I went down to Coney Island to TTO Studios, Tony Dick, Atlas Records, and we was at the end of the album. And he said, "You guys want to make a house record?" I immediately, I was like, yeah, hell yeah. I was, just, I was like, play the record. And he put on Royal House, uh, Party People. Now that record used Marshall Jefferson's record. And Todd Terry produced that. But he put a hip hop beat to it. And there were three other versions. So I was like, I already been dancing to those three versions. And we took the third version. He said, well, we could take the record and just make a new record out of it. Sure, why not? I said, we, I said, we could take the record, like the vinyl? We said, yeah, put it on the turntable. Then we had the instrumental, recorded it on the tape machine. I remember sitting like outside the control room on the ladder. Then I got up and started dancing. 20 minutes later, I had my part written, recorded. I already knew. I was like, girl, I'll house you. Girl, I'll house you. You in my hut now, my hut. You know, I was just thinking, you know, in hip hop, we say I'll house you. That means we're gonna like jack you. That means we're gonna jack you. We're gonna take something off of you. So I was thinking, ah, oh, this would be cool, like a double meaning, you know? The creative process for Girl I House You, it was it was pretty fast. Um, Todd Terry called us in the studio, him and the owner, Tony Dick, the, the owner of Islands Records at the time. Uh, they called us into the studio and they told us that they want us to do a remix for a, um, a house song that they had been working called uh, Royal House. And uh, we got in there, we heard the song, we wrote a couple of quick verses, party vibe. At that time, we used to record in the booth together. So we were both in there, we shut down the lights and we just we just hammered away at it. And it didn't take long. I think we did it in like three takes. I mean, the, the record felt great when we finished. And um, I mean, look at us now, still probably one of the biggest records of our career. Like 30 years almost, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's sick, it's a sick number, oh, 30 years, goodness gracious. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a good record, but I didn't think it was gonna really blow up like it did. It felt good when we left the studio, but I, I didn't even, I think it happened so fast too, cause I think uh, we recorded it maybe like two days later, they had that thing on wax and it was banging. So it was like, it, it went, at that for that time period, it was a fast turnaround. I had a ball, and that was like the funny thing. It was the last record we made for the album, and when we gave it to Warlock, who was the pre P and D deal, pressing and distribution, they laughed at it. They, it's this classic when you, you when you do something that's never been done before. There's always going to be somebody who's like, "Oh, are you seriously." PCs, why personal computers? Why would you want to? Who would want that? You know, he laughed at it like that, like, "Oh, God, this is a joke, guys." And he said, "Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it on the cassette." He put it on the cassette. All the all the club DJs would play that record off off the cassette, and then they would call Red and say, "You don't have this on vinyl? Y'all pressing up vinyl? I got the first single. I got on the run." What's up with our house shoot? We playing that off the cassette, they going crazy. They had to remaster the album because people were going in, this, going in the stores, they wanted to buy the album for that record. You know, other, the other audience, the people that were in the house music. And it was only on the cassette. So they had to remaster the album. So the last laugh was on, was that him? You know what I mean? Because it was like, we told you, this is the joint. So they had to go remaster the album cost more money to remaster the album, to put our house music. And that's my joint. I love house music. 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 So I was like a big, that was a big victory for me. The funny thing about house music was that in New York, house music was born from disco. So, you know, disco records were still being played. And then after the disco set, the DJ would play the house house songs. So 
if you're in the club either that early or that late, you're going to hear them songs and you're going to feel them, you know. Of course, everybody associates, you know, house music with gay people, but in the same essence, people also a house associate house music with girls. <laughs> so it's like if you want to get with the chicks, you're going to dance a couple of house tunes, you know what I'm saying? It's either house or reggae, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hip hop lets you dance too far apart. <laughs> early on, we were into house music. We were into all kinds because that's what the DJ gave us. The DJ gave us the house music. He gave us the hip hop, the breaks, you know what I'm saying? And uh, funk records. So, I mean, we were, we were fortunate to have it all. If somebody was really on the house tip, you could tell. You know, somebody who was just well-rounded, you could kind of tell too. So it wasn't a, a taboo to really listen to house back in the days. We did, we would do four shows a night, four or five shows a night from Wednesday to Sunday. Roller skating rinks, kid shows, door open shows, middle of the night shows, after party shows. And sometimes it would be just that record. I mean, they just We just do that one record. And people go cr twice. People go crazy. You couldn't get enough of it. Still to this day, we could do that record twice, and people go crazy. Like we was in um, Newcastle, England. We performed the house. You crowd went crazy. They have they, all the memories came out. It's wild. And when we finished the song, a girl comes up to me and says, um, "Excuse me, I was outside. I'm sorry. I missed that song. I was outside having a cigarette." And I, I really love that song. Can can you do it again? So I told the whole crowd, yo, this girl was outside smoking. And because of her, they said, we got to do this song again. Can we do, can we still do it? And everybody was screaming, yeah, yeah. You know, we like made a joke out of it on her, you know, did it again, same response. The girl fainted right in front of me. They had to carry her out because she had too much to drink. She was dancing. All night long. 